Got my BPD diagnosis this week. It would have never happened if not for your stream making me aware. Thank you. You're very welcome. Lady Kelgana, I promise you, your life will get better. If you have BPD and you don't know it, it makes your life very difficult. Knowing you have BPD is one of the most freeing things in the world if you have BPD because then you, everything will start to click together. I promise you it is the first step to starting to understand. And guess what? Un this, is a, this is sort of a random thing. Come in, please. Please come in. Uh, yes, I do. Oh my goodness. Here you are. Thank you. Here you go. I love you. Um, uh, this is very, this is a small little departure and I'm going to take these horns off in a second because this is actually hurting a little bit. Um, however, let me tell you something. Um, with, when it comes to BPD, a lot of people treat BPD like it's a fucking mental <laughs> death sentence. It's not, it's not even close. It's not even fucking close. It's just that nobody, everybody's been, everybody's so afraid of BPD for so, for so long that, that people would not, would avoid diagnosis, which means they would get worse. I promise you, do not be afraid of BPD. BPD people are some of the most amazing people you will ever meet. It is severely, severely stigmatized and there is zero reason for that. It is completely bullshit. Soma, thank you so very much for the tier one sub for three months. Thank you so much. Oof. Anyway, we're going to try to take that off for a little bit and I'm going to clean up my hair here. Listen, there's a thing. Hold on. I'm going to take a small moment here. I know that we're not really like into the content or whatever. Do I play musical instruments? Yes, I do. I play piano and I have, I'm starting and I'm learning guitar again. I used to play guitar, but I'm way out of practice. And uh, I've been relearning it, but slowly because I've been fucking crazy busy. Okay, let me tell you something real quick. So BPD is a uh, personality disorder, as they call them. BPD is a personality dis disorder that is generally um, categorized by severe mood swings, usually relating to relationships. Um, splitting, which is when, uh, you tend to, uh, see yourself if you're an internal splitter or others, if you're an external splitter, uh, as either black or white, depending on in, in emotionally intense situations. So let me explain a little bit. This is just a little bit of an awareness stream. Um, I'm trying to get better and braver about doing this. So then it's been helpful to people in the past. So I'm going to do it again. Splitting is like when you get stressed or scared, um, it becomes very difficult to see to see people like other people who you have relationships with um, as anything but either all good or all bad. So if it's a partner, th this is why BPD people often end up getting stuck in abusive relationships because they will they will split what's called split white towards their partners, which means they will begin to think that they're, they will think their partner is like a, a divine being that can't do anything wrong and it must be you. Um, and if it's not you, well, you can't comp, it's very hard to comprehend that. You just perceive it as yourself. And um, now, contrary to popular belief, this does not affect your, your worldview most, like vast majority of the time. It's your personal relationships. For example, I don't look at the world in a black and white way at all. Um, um, but when it comes to myself, because I am an internal splitter, I tend to go through phases of life where I either see myself as complete and utter trash, or I feel like I'm at the top of my game and nobody can stop me. And that might sound like like mania. It's not like mania. It's it's more like a it's more like a moral thing. It's very hard to explain, okay? It's it's really hard to explain. Hey, Tiffany Starr, great to see you. Thanks for coming by. Come on over to the website. We'll get you a fancy name. Um, and uh, how would non-BPDers see relationships in themselves? Non-BPDers are much less likely. Okay, hold on a second. Let me get it. Let me let me finish explaining this. Um, another thing that is uh that is common with uh, people with BPD is, um, uh, what's the word? Emotional impulsivity. Have you ever heard of like, uh, of like you hauling, you know? Um, like when you, you fall in love with somebody and you're just like, move in with me, move in with me. Um, that's like, that's a thing that's common with BPD. Um, and if you don't know you have BPD, that can be very disruptive to your life. 
And if you know you have BPD, you can control that. Yeah. And not necessarily control it, but you can facilitate it. Yeah. It's, 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 but the, here's the other thing that a lot of people, yeah, crazy ex-girlfriend. Yes, I've heard about that. Um, yeah, the border changes color. Indeed. Well, Kubi Rels, you might have BPD. You might not. Lots of people experience some level of these things. But for me, it was actually shredding my life. Like, I didn't know it. I was desperately trying to figure out why I felt the way that I did. And I just couldn't figure it out. And then I discovered I had BPD. And then it made my life make a lot more sense. My emotions are still very intense, but I know how to live with them. I know how to work around them. I've known some people who have a history of going super hard into relationships and then having them fail epically. I guess it, it dials that up to 11. Yes, it can. It absolutely can. In my case, I tend to have relationships that are either massive successes or massive catastrophic failures. I have been with uh, my partner Gynotype for six years, almost seven years now. Uh, what causes BPD? Usually childhood trauma. Usually childhood trauma. Yeah. Um, in my case, it was a very, you know, yeah, it was childhood trauma. But um, I was, well, it's complicated. I, go, watch my, go watch my story about growing up in a cult if you want to understand it. Um, yeah, Soma, I feel you. You've always given 110%. Yes. So here's a really interesting thing. Let me tell you a quick story, okay? I, I, I'm, I didn't know I was going to be opening with a mental health segment, but you know what? Let's do it. It's, I'm here for it, okay? I'm, I'm feeling it today, okay? Let me tell you something. So when I first discovered that I had BPD, somebody who also had BPD sent me a blog. And I'll, I'll share this blog at another time. I don't have all the links right now because I wasn't prepared. Okay, so BPD. One of the things that I, when I first learned I had BPD, I was very sad about it. I was very worried about it. And then I read this blog that talked about something unique about people with BPD. There is a sort of truism, and I don't think this is true in general, but everyone's heard it. How many people in chat, real quick, if you just just put a uh, info rose in chat if you've ever heard this before. Have you ever heard the the, the sort of truism that uh that or the truth the truthiness statement or the or the saying that um after your first relate after your the first year of any relationship um love changes and becomes le quote unquote less intense has anybody heard that if you've heard that saying before give me an info rose if you've heard people say that before okay yeah Okay, so a lot of people have heard that saying. Lots of people say that, that like after the first year of a relationship, your relationship becomes less intense and and you settle in a little more. Is is it's a it's again, it's like a what's the word? Um Oh, uh my apologies. Tiffany Star, the Discord is discord.gg forward slash demon mama. There you go. Discord.gg forward slash demon mama. And if you need help, just uh, uh, DM people. Yes, people call it the honeymoon moon period. Yes, the honeymoon phase. That's another term that people use. Thank you, Vermin. I really, really appreciate that. And Bastard Collection, credit to you as well. Thank you both for bringing that up. That's the word I was looking for. The honeymoon period. Um, here's the thing. That's not really true, first of all. So first thing you should understand is that's not really true. Don't let people tell you stupid shit like that okay the honeymoon period is not even really real however it it a lot of people do experience something like that where their relationship goes from the butterflies and the 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 excitedness and all of that into something much more calm and relaxed and the reason why i'm talking about this is because in the first po BPD positive blog I ever read, it talked about being an eternal romantic. And what that meant for this person, and she talked about how no matter what, even though she'd been with her, par her boyfriend for 10 years, she never stopped feeling like the first day that she met her boyfriend. And that is how I am. And I think that's an amazing thing. And... I am the most eternal romantic you could possibly imagine. Oh, we do have a... Wait, wait, did the voice chat not get set up? 
What the hell? Did the voice chat not get set up? Um, can somebody, uh, mod, uh, if there's any mod who's listening, can somebody ping, um, a Zazzle to open up the, uh, the, 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 vo the stream voice chat? Oh, it is there. Okay. All right. Yeah, it should be there. Oh, Tiffany. Oh, Tiffany, you need to agree to the rules. Go to the rules page and click the, uh, click the little thing. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I forgot that we have to click the rules page. Okay. Um, anyway, so being an eternal romantic was the first positive thing and and keep in mind that when psychologists talk about this they talk about it like it's a bad thing when psychologists talk about bpd they will say you're obsessive they will say that you are uh codependent they will say that you're a lot of these different things and sometimes yes lady kelgana that is categoric that is like one of the signs of bpd short and chaotic Yep, 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 that's fair, Roman hands. Yeah, thank you, Lamp. Um, okay, let me explain this further. So, the eternal romantic. Um, thank you, Hort Dern. Appreciate that. Um, so, uh, yes, 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 psychosocialism. The issue with being a full-on romantic forever is some people can't match that emotion, and that can cause anxiety and paranoia and all kinds of other things. Um, another thing is, um, people with BPD tend to have severe abandonment issues, which can lead to them being the crazy girl, the crazy girlfriend, as is the stereotype of people with BPD, that you, uh, you always want to talk and you always want to spend time together. And it can become that, that is a, that can easily happen, you know, um, that really can happen. Um, but, but let me explain. So this blog that I read, um, talked about um bpd again in a positive light and instead of saying oh you're a codependent you're this you're an eternal romantic and that gave me words to explain who i am and something that i'm actually that i don't want to be gone i like being the eternal romantic i like being that way and i don't want i didn't want that to be psychologized and this person gave me the words to do that, but it also taught me what I what I need to do to be able to get along with people who don't have BPD or other people who have BPD. And that and it took somebody talking about it in a positive light. Is BPD a spectrum? I know people who've had pretty severe BPD, but I don't think I'm quite there, but everything you're describing sounds like me pretty strongly. It is possible, of course. All all mental illnesses are all mental illnesses are spectrums. There are varying levels of severity for every person. And keep in mind, even if some of these things resonate with you, that doesn't necessarily mean that you have BPD. Um so, yeah, keep that in mind. Um it is you know, again, because it is generally con it is generally believed to be caused by trauma um, in young in like your early life. Um, you know, there tends to be a lot of queer people who have BPD because yes, please come in. Oh, you're amazing! Thank you, Vaughn. Thank you. Oh, early food day. Hey, smooch. Mm. Thank you so much. Hi, Yoda. Hi. Will you make sure Yoda gets out so she doesn't get trapped in here? Oh, amazing, amazing. This was always an issue. Vermin Hand says, this was always an issue with Vosh. He's a very independent person who likes his space, and I'm literally always down to talk and hang out and do anything together. We got better over the years, and now I'm the sole person he can be around 24-7 and enjoy it as we grew together. But it could be super hard at times. Yes. See, um, that is how... Okay, so I don't want to get too, too personal here, but um, my I am very compatible with... Um, with my partner gynotype because specifically because gynotype is like that because i have come to learn over time because we communicate a lot that gynotype will kind of like do her own thing um okay let uh, me be completely honest so new people are here i have bpd okay borderline personality disorder it is a very he very very heavily stigmatized um, personality disorder. It is very unfairly stigmatized, like really unfairly stigmatized. And, um, I, in fact, it's so stigmatized that me, 
fucking demon mama, the loud bitch on the internet, have been, I literally shook the first time I ever talked about it on stream. The first time I ever talked about having BPD, I was shaking on stream because uh, a lot of people will think that you are a monster if you have BPD. I'm not kidding you. In fact, if you go look at old medical textbooks about BPD, it was considered borderline personality disorder was considered the it was considered a like a devil disorder that would uh and BPD people were basically considered evil and unsalvageable. It's that is complete bullshit by the way. It's just that psychology at the time had no fucking clue what they were doing. But nonetheless, that has stuck for a long long time yes professionals will still dump you over it to this day yeah i know it's really bad it's really 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 bad it's not like that so if you're out there and you have bpd do not listen to those people yes it can be hard to deal with i have no idea if it's because of jeffrey dahmer i don't know um alora thank you by the way alora you are one of the reasons i've been brave enough so a shout out to my wonderful wonderful tiktok editor alora who is one of the reasons why i've gotten brave enough um to talk about this on stream um you have legit no idea what bpd is well you know what i'll go over it again it's early in stream those of you who came early you can hear it again real quick okay so let me explain for all the people who just came in. Please be patient. If you are if you already heard this, please be patient because all the new people came in and this is kind of important, okay? All right, so, um, okay, so. BPD, also known as borderline personality disorder, is a personality disorder that is uh, most commonly associated with childhood trauma of various types. I grew up in a cult. It kind of makes sense why uh, I ended up having BPD. Um, BPD is characterized by um, intense, chaotic uh, emotions with regard to personal relationships. It is characterized by um, relationship impulsivity, um, extreme abandonment issues, like fear of being abandoned. Um, like sometimes, like if somebody doesn't text you back in five minutes, you might freak the fuck out um, sort of thing. Um, it is characterized by uh, a thing called splitting. Splitting is where um, under duress, uh, your brain basically decides, okay, we're freaking out. We're in danger here. You need to find out who's good and who's bad. Yes, we are, Ugly Pie. Um, so uh, splitting can be either internal or external. If it's internal, you tend to split on yourself. In order to survive, you need to decide very quickly who was right and wrong in a situation. And... Um, you will decide whether you were right in the situation and you tend to believe, yes, yes, I did the right thing here. I'm going to double down. Fuck this. I'm 100% on it. Or you will decide I did everything wrong. I am a subhuman piece of shit. Uh, I need to disappear forever. Um, that sort of thing. Um, so... Um, Vermin says, when I had a consult with a campus therapist to see if I liked them, I was terrified, but I told them I was concerned I may have BPD, would like that looked into, so I listed a few symptoms. They laughed and said, oh, you don't have BPD, and that's a good thing, so don't be worried. And then they listed my symptoms back to me in a diff in different language. It was cool, and I never went back. Yikes. That is really bad. Yep, not all therapists are good, as it turns out. I'm really sorry to hear that. Um, yeah, so uh, splitting... But splitting can also be external. So um, if you are if you are an ex if you're somebody and and some people split both. I have had both happen in the past. Though I don't tend to be um, I don't tend to be somebody who splits externally. Um, though I do. Though I have with partners in the past. I have had partners where um, again I said this before. I'll say it again. A lot of BPD people get stuck in abusive relationships because. Uh, abusers will take advantage of the fact that a BPD person has split white on them. Splitting white means that you see somebody as basically perfect. It's very, very, very hard um, to like see anything wrong with that person. And so you get stuck in an abusive relationship where somebody can, can really hurt you and you still see them as good. You justify yourself, like I did something wrong. I did something so wrong. I'm so bad at this, like all that. Um, and the thing is, like, it is it is more common than people um, know, uh, but uh, and whatnot, but um, but yeah, and and there are 
yeah, so, and, and again, once again, though, BPD is severely, severely stigmatized. And what I was talking about before the raid came in was how my diagnosis, getting diagnosed from somebody who was caring and loving, actually changed the way that I approach my entire life. And it made me so much happier. So goddamn much happier. Probably like the third most important thing in my life. The first being transition. The second being my relationship, my relationships with my two partners who I have now. And the third being my diagnosis for BPD. Um, and l realizing how that changed the way that I looked at everything and how I was able to navigate the world. Um, and, uh, it is just because you resonate with this doesn't mean you have BPD necessarily. BPD is pretty extreme usually, but, um, it might help you. And if you even, even just finding out that I had it helped me. I, I didn't take, I don't take any medication for my BPD. I take medication for my ADHD. I take medication for depression as many, 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 many people do, but there is no medication necessary for BPD. Do you want to know what the most effective treatment for BPD is? Cognitive behavioral therapy, which cognitive behavior, behavioral therapy is essentially the science of building healthier habits. I'm serious. That sounds very silly, but that's basically what it is. Psychosocialism says the problem with splitting white is that when someone who you split white does something to hurt you even by accident it can turn black very quickly. I've had people who trust me very much become hostile very quickly and it was challenging but I persevered and it worked. That's possible. Yep, DBT is another one. DBT and CBT are basically the same thing. Um there's very little difference between the two. They're just regional terms. In in Canada they call it DBT, here we call it CBT. They're they're basically the same thing. Okay, let me continue. So, um, yeah, I know, cock and ball torture. Yes, yes, yes. Um, but uh, one other thing is uh, what I was talking about before everybody came in was that when I first discovered I had, uh, I had BPD, I was pretty sad about it, and I was pretty stressed about it, and I didn't feel good about it. And I found this blog of a woman who was trying to be BPD, like, positive. Basically, um, basically, you know, was trying to help people not feel so fucking bad. Because, again, like I said, there was a time in the past where if you were diagnosed with BPD, people would literally drop you. Your therapist would drop you because it was considered to be a disorder that could not be helped. Very, very stupid. Um, hey, thank you very much, Lagomorbid. Really appreciate that. Hey, thank you, Sugar Glass. Lagomorbid with the tier one sub. Loving the supportive talk so much that I subbed, uh, heart BPD po gang positivity. Yes, thank you so much, and you're very welcome. Um, really appreciate the support. Um, so, um, let me explain this. What I saw in there was the concept of the eternal romantic, which is basically, instead of framing... BPD as codependent or obsessive, the blog focused on explaining that BPD people don't ever tend to leave the honeymoon period of relationships. The honeymoon period is a, a sort of wives tale that has some basis in reality. Um, the, the honeymoon period is basically like the period where you get the butterflies and the, and you get excited and all of that. Um, but instead uh, and BPD people tend to never leave that period. That is a thing that is characterized. Now, it, psychologists have, have sort of clinically explained that as obsession. But what she explained it as was being an eternal romantic. And when I learned about that, I realized there were healthy ways to express myself. And it made me happier. Because instead of, instead of like blindly... Uh, being like super, super intense and not understanding and feeling like, why the hell does nobody, you know, re you know, do this for me as well? Instead, I was able to go, oh, like I'm the eternal romantic and not everyone is an eternal romantic. It was very helpful. Um, BPD is borderline personality disorder. Yes, borderline personality disorder, not bipolar. Bipolar is very different. Um, yeah. CBT is cognitive behavior therapy. DBT is dialectical behavioral therapy. CBT is used more for anxiety and OCD. DBT is used more for people with BPD, autism, and mood disorders. I was under the impression they were v really similar, um, but maybe not. Maybe not. Um, okay, I could be wrong about that. 
uh, when I was when I was informed the difference, I was told they were basically the same thing, just different places use different terms. Um, yeah. So whatever, that's fine. Um, oh, they're pretty different over here. Oh, okay. So in Canada, it's the same. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I get it. But yeah. Um. Okay, I see. Psychosocialism. They have different focuses, but the method is similar. Okay, that was something that I was honestly uninformed about. Thank you. Um. Um. But yeah, um, there was a really great video out there by Curio. Do you all, does anybody know the bread tuber Curio? Um, they have a video about BPD that is one of the most moving videos. It literally made me cry. Um, hey, thank you so much, Cookie. It's a, a fantastic video. Maybe we'll watch it at some point. It is a fantastic video, even for people who don't have BPD. Bastard Collection says, at a choir concert, I was I was talking to a classmate and being naive, brought up that I'd been su suspecting that I have BPD. She immediately started talking about her abusive ex who has BPD and said there was no way I could have it because you're too nice and only bad people have that. Worst part, she was my ride home. That is not true. And once again, if you suspect you have BPD, it is okay. It is not. It is not a death sentence at all all i promise you not only is it possible to live a good life it is possible to live an amazing and beautiful life bpd is not some sort of death sentence you're not an evil person that is bullshit that is bullshit i promise you okay i promise you yeah it can be hard it's fucking hard i mean i struggle with the abandonment stuff constantly constantly it's really really hard for me uh but but yeah The other side of BPD is that BPD people are also some of the most devoted caretakers you can possibly imagine. Because when BPD people fall in love, they fall in love really hard. And that makes them, in my opinion, a heroic, a heroic potential. You know, they have, they have the potential. You know, have, has anybody here played Darkest Dungeon? You know, hold on. In Darkest Dungeon, here, I'll show you this. Where's the thing? See this right here? Okay. In Darkest Dungeon, there is a mechanic by which your, um, your stress level goes up. And when you reach 100 stress level, you have a chance to either become virtuous or become broken. And... The plus side of BPD is like this. When you become virtuous, your stress levels reach a, reach a level and you break good. You Instead of breaking bad, you break good. And that is something that I've found. I've known many people with BPD in my life. And sometimes in, in the situations that are most stressful, they are the people who will literally save your life. But it's also possible to go the other way. And it's not a single, it's not a single on-off switch. You know, it's not a single on-off switch. Okay? It isn't. Minds can, sh wait, hold on. Minds can shatter under stress, but not this one. Not today. Exactly. Darkest Dungeon is a very good game, by the way. Um, so... There's the mental health segment, okay? I'm serious. People, it if you have a a a mental health issue, a personality disorder or otherwise, please do not allow yourself to be blackpilled because of it. Yes, our society is not very good to people with with mental health things, but I promise you, there is a very 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 real path forward for you, okay? I'm serious. People are stupid about mental health, but you don't have to be. We don't have to be. Wake and Jake just realized I'm an eternal romantic. My wife and best friend recently left me in a very traumatic way. And I'm still in love with her. I'm glad I have better language to put to my pain. Thanks, Mama. You're very welcome. I promise you it can help you. It can help. Learning learning that I was an, an eternal romantic has helped me build healthier relationships. I'm serious. It has.